What's up YouTube? Have you ever wondered how to use shapes in Affinity Publisher on the iPad? Well, that's what we're here to talk about today. Welcome back, my name is Ben Nielsen. I'm a media design educator and today we are learning how to use the shape tools in Affinity Publisher on the iPad. Affinity Publisher is the only option when it comes to desktop publishing apps on the iPad. There really is nothing else that even compares. And so you really wanna be able to get the most out of it. Now I've done an entire course, an intro to Affinity Publisher on the iPad, which you can check out the links to in the description below. This video on how to use the shapes comes from that course. So we're going to learn all about how the shape tools work because they are a really critical tool when you get into Affinity Publisher. So let's go ahead, let's dive in and see how this works. Now we know how to use the pen tool to draw lines and we could, of course, use the pen tool to draw things like squares and rectangles and circles and things like that. But we don't need to do that because we have the shape tool. So when we tap on the shape tool, it's a rectangle to start out with. But if we tap on it again, remember we have the little chevron so we can get more by tapping and holding. You can see there are a plethora of shapes available to you. These shapes can be really useful in different kinds of designs. For this class, we're really just going to use rectangles, maybe rounded rectangles, ellipses, the simple shapes. We probably won't get into the more complex shapes like stars, square stars, crescents, and cogs. Like we're just not going to really need those for creating the mood board. Let's just talk a little bit about how the shape tools work. You've already seen me use the rectangle before. So let's start with the rounded rectangle. The rounded rectangle allows you to draw out a rectangle, but with rounded corners. Of course, the same keyboard shortcuts or modifier keys are going to apply to this. So if I just hold one finger on the screen, it's going to allow me to keep it in proportion. Two fingers is going to go from the center. Three fingers is going to go from the center in proportion. The same if you use the modifier keys for shift and command. So let's go ahead and just drag this out. You can see there's a couple of things going on here. There is a fill, which is the dark gray, and a stroke, which is the black. And this is because we'd already set dark gray on our last rectangle and we'd set black as a stroke on our line. So if we go to our color panel, you can see that we have two options here. There is a dark gray fill and a black stroke. To change either of those, I can just swipe up on them to get rid of them. So I can swipe up on the fill and then I will have nothing there and then I can swipe up on the stroke and then I will have nothing there. Okay, I'm going to undo that just so we can see this again. If I wanna change the color, I can do that from the color wheel depending on which one I have selected. So that's the stroke. If I wanna change the fill, I just tap on the fill and then I can change the fill. Now we're gonna talk more about color in another video, so don't worry too much about it now. I'm just gonna undo that. But that's how you adjust those. So the fill is the stuff inside of the shape and the stroke is the actual outline of the shape. Okay, let's close up the color panel. Another thing to note about working with shapes is that sometimes shapes will have these little orange handles. So you can see it right here. This handle is for rounding the rectangle. So I can go all the way down almost to a circle and I can come all the way out to a very sharp square. So I can just drag on that and different shapes will have different orange handles for adjusting different properties. So whenever you see an orange handle, it's worth just experimenting with it to see what it does. You can also see there are a few options in the menu bar. So if we hit the help, we can see what these special options are. There's the absolute size option, the matched cornered option and the convert to curves option. So if we tap absolute size, what we're going to get the actual thing in inches. If we turn that off, you can see we get radius in percentage. So inches for if we want it in absolute size on the page and turn that off if we want to see it in percentage of roundness. You can see we have this match corners option. So if we turn the match corners option off, that's going to allow us to independently change the corners. And you can see we now have orange handles on each one. So say we want just one sharp corner, we can do that. Now you also have this option to do a predetermined set. So there's round, straight, round inverse, cutout, and none. So you can just change these depending on how you want the change in the curvature to happen. Oh, you can see that I match the corners now and we can change all of them at the same time. So we could use this to get different types of shapes. The last option here is convert to curves. When we tap that, it's actually going to bake in whatever we've done. So we no longer have the orange handles, we now have points that we can modify. And you can see that it actually switched us to the node tool when we did that because we're going to need the node tool to modify those points. So that's how you actually bake the appearance of what you're looking at. You wanna make sure that you have the shape the way you want it and that you don't want access to those special orange handles anymore when you do that. Okay, so that's a little bit about shapes. You can of course do a lot more. Like I said, there are a whole bunch of different shapes here and that are gonna have different options 
ones, but that's more complicated than we're going to get into in this class. We're basically going to deal with rectangles, rounded rectangles, and ellipses in this class because those are the most useful when you're dealing with a mood board. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed learning a lot more about how the shape tools work here in Affinity Publisher on the iPad. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up and go ahead and subscribe for more videos like this one. If you want to take the full course intro to Affinity Publisher on the iPad, go ahead and check out the links in the description below. I would love to see you in that course. It's available on Skillshare and on Gumroad. If you do go ahead and purchase it on Gumroad, make sure that you go ahead and use the code YT15 to get it for just $15. Okay, we'll chat in the comments and I will see you in the next video.